A few tweets have set off a conversation in niche corners as to whether or not the Steam Deck is a device that the fighting game community could benefit from and even adopt as a standard in tournaments. As a lapsed online warrior, I couldn't help but give you my two cents on this. Let's get into it. The advent of the HD generation of consoles came in 2005 with the Xbox 360 and then the PS3 in the following year. While some previous consoles had the ability to go HD, this was the first generation where HD TVs were going to see mainstream adoption and the consoles were going to help accelerate that growth with HD first graphical prowess. Of course, when we talk about mainstream adoption of HD television sets, we're talking primarily about plasmas and LCD panels. However, CRTs hadn't completely phased out yet, and HD CRTs absolutely existed. This was key for competitive gamers because plasma and LCD panels came with significant latency while CRTs had no lag whatsoever. So Street Fighter and Smash Bros. tournaments alike would be played exclusively on CRTs. Tournament organizers, or TOs, knew that this was a ticking time bomb for a few reasons. Number one, CRTs wouldn't continue to be made forever. They were becoming less and less popular for practical reasons. More people obviously preferred the lighter and slimmer profile of a plasma or LCD, and the average person didn't notice the latency or even care to. More importantly, however, CRTs don't scale well. The more entrance in a tournament, the more displays need to be supplied. And as we approach the release of Street Fighter 4, fighting games and the fighting game community, or FGC, was poised for a resurgence that would make it bigger than ever. Streaming fighting game competitions started to become a thing, and after EVO Moment 37, regular people were becoming more in tune with personalities in the fighting game community itself. Street Fighter 4 both generated a lot of this interest and subsequently capitalized on it. It felt like a return to form, with long-forgotten characters making a reappearance and a renewed focus on the two Shotos, Ryu and Ken. So fighting game competitions saw more entrance and simultaneously became more popular to watch. It was a business now. Case in point, EVO 2009. EVO is the largest fighting game tournament every year, but to put it in perspective, EVO 2008 had 721 total entrants for all games officially played in the tournament. EVO 2009, on the other hand, reportedly had over 1,700 entrants for Street Fighter 4 alone. CRTs weren't going to cut it anymore. Enter the EVO monitor. I don't actually know for a fact if the EVO monitor was used in 2009 or not. I couldn't find enough history on the subject. The timing is tight, but it would make more sense if the EVO monitor made its debut in 2010 EVO. In any case, the so-called EVO monitor is a 23-inch ASUS monitor model number VH236H with a famously low 2 millisecond response time and a 1080p resolution. It colloquially became referred to as the EVO monitor precisely because EVO adapted its usage and that made it a standard around the world. Finally, the FGC had a standard monitor that they could use at tournaments and meetups and even just at their homes. After all, it's always nice to practice on the hardware that will be used on the big stage. So what does this have to do with Steam Deck? Well, first, there's this tweet from On Deck. If I'm to understand correctly, this is Pierre Loup, aka Plagman, from the Steam Deck team playing Street Fighter V using a snack box micro, connected to the deck itself. Now, you're not gonna believe this, but I have some notes somewhere about how the snack box micro would be the perfect companion to a Steam Deck as a road warrior sort of situation. I can go to any meetup with a tiny console and a tiny hitbox style controller and be ready for virtual fisticuffs at any moment. I love the notion of that. But then, another tweet took this concept to a whole other level. Mark Julio, aka Markman, is well known in the FGC for being an arcade stick designer and Tekken expert and commentator. In addition to that, he's been the director of global business development at EVO for the last six years. I give you that background to hopefully convey how important it is that he tweets something like this. He says he's, quote, going to be testing the Steam Deck soon. We'll put it through the grinder in terms of competitive viability, arcade stick slash controller testing, and connectivity, e.g. monitors. Thanks, Valve, for the assist. End quote. 
This is a big deal. While in-person tournaments have been less common due to COVID, of course, some are beginning to come back. As of writing, Frosty Fostings is taking place and most games are being played on a PlayStation 4. PlayStation 4 is a standard tournament platform and has been for many years for most fighting games today. A move to PS5 would be extremely difficult considering how hard that console is to find. A move to Steam Deck could potentially be a bit easier if they can score a partnership with Valve. And believe it or not, this would open up a world of possibilities. By and large, the FTC wouldn't mind the jump to PC, but in its current state, it's not feasible. The machines are expensive and often bulky. Moreover, there are nagging problems like seamlessly connecting and disconnecting controllers while the game is still running. But if Valve and Evo, or the FGC at large, could work together, then this could be the beginning of a new standard platform. A partnership with Valve means not only the opportunity to score hardware, but also the opportunity to shape the software. If Markman can point out the things that don't work, Valve can take that feedback and potentially come back with a better revision. And what could the FGC gain from adopting the Steam Deck as a standard? Well, for one, there's the games. With the exception of Virtual Fighter 5, all of the games being played on a PS4 at Frosty Fostings are available on PC. Furthermore, PC has a large selection of indie fighters that may not be available on PS4. Games like Dems Fighting Herds, Footsies, Pocket Rumble, and Schwarzer Blitz. Same goes for indie platform fighters that are closer to Smash Brothers in the family tree. I'm talking Rivals of Ether, Roof Rage, and Indie Pogo. Furthermore, it's not an understatement to say that I'm only scratching the surface of what's available on PC. Look at this badass fighter in development called Blazing Strike. In addition to games, Steam Deck opens up compatibility options. The fighting game community has learned to deal with using preferred controllers across different hardware with add-ons and custom PCBs, but a PC, and Steam Deck in particular, has the potential to make it seamless to connect virtually any controller to the deck, and being a PC means that this is a standard that can last for more than just one hardware cycle. It can evolve into the Steam Deck 2 or a future Steam console relatively easily. Finally, with the Steam Deck comes a reasonable price and form factor. This could be the smallest standard platform yet, and you could theoretically run tournaments on a $400 64GB model with microSD cards. Of course, this is still all potential. We have yet to see how committed Valve are to this effort. Are they just testing the waters, or are they ready to dive in the deep end? Only time will tell. But who cares about the pros? What does Valve embracing the FGC mean for the average fighting game player? Well, I get asked about fighting games in the comments pretty regularly. Many people ask me if their favorite fighting game will be playable on the Steam Deck. And guess what? All signs point to yes. Fighting games are great for Steam Deck for a few reasons. Number one, the graphics are very scalable. They're built to run 60 FPS on a wide variety of hardware. So the Steam Deck will have more than enough hardware to run fighters at 60 Hertz. Secondly, they tend to work great via Proton. They also don't tend to have anti-cheat despite the online nature. Then there's controls. The D-pad has received some praise already and when interviewed by PC Gamer, they confirmed that the D-pad has a pivot and that one of the designers was an avid fighting game player. In retrospect, I'm guessing that designer was Plagman. Also, the controller itself is a full controller as opposed to what you see on something like a Switch or even some GPD devices that feel smaller in the hands than a DualShock. So the Steam Deck gets a hat trick. It's got the performance, the compatibility, and the controls for a fighter. It's got more fighters than any given console, and it's much more portable than any console with fighters. For all these reasons, the Steam Deck is perfectly poised to be the next standard for fighting game pros and casuals alike. But can they reach that potential? Can they continue to embrace the fighting game community and provide revisions based on their feedback? Will people even be able to buy one, or is this thing going to be backlogged for years? What do you think? Listen, I didn't give my usual plug. I enjoyed writing this script so much that it just didn't come to mind. But if you enjoyed this video, just like, subscribe, slap the bell. You get the idea. If you have any feedback or want more videos like this, be sure to leave a comment. And there's not much written history on the stuff I was talking about. So if any of my details are wrong, definitely let me know in the comments. I will pin a comment with any needed corrections. 
And thanks to my guy Kedrick, aka Sincere Styles, aka Black Excellence, for providing some of the Street Fighter V footage. I didn't want to showcase my gameplay because I'm trash, but Kedrick is easily the best Laura I've ever played, and it looks like his Lucia is no slouch either. In any case, that's going to do it for today, but tune in later this week for a big Steam Deck news video. There's been a lot going on, and I can't wait to report it all. Until next time, y'all, Deck Gang out. Goodbye. So now we're in chip situation, yeah. okay. You see the little forwards, he's looking for it preemptively. That's what he, you got to do if you're going to be parrying SAT. Ooh. Hold on. Oh. There it is. No! 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 Nasty! No! No way! No! What? Big nasty from the heavens! Oh.